Hi everyone, Lynn here and I'm back with another organizational video. Today we're going to focus on how I store my stamps. Uh, before I get into that, I'm just going to give you a really, really quick tour of my room. I'm actually standing at the furthest end of the room. This is a door that actually leads outside. And right next to that, I have my Jet Max cubes and then my shelving unit. And then those double doors right there lead into the living room. And then on the far end of the room, that's where my die cutting station is, and that's what we covered in the last video. I am going to turn you around so you can see part of the rest of the room. Uh, it's kind of a disaster right now because I've been working on several different projects. Um, yeah, anyways. So you can tell, uh, at least I hope you can tell, that the room isn't very wide. It's like eight and a half feet wide, which isn't very big. But it is 17 feet long. So long and narrow and with tons and tons of windows, which I really love, but that give me very little wall space. So, all right, now we're going to focus on the stamps. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have my stamps stored two different ways. One of the ways I have them is how I like things to be stored, which is standing up and facing me. And we're going to cover that in just a minute. I have the majority of the stamps that are in there are the ones that I use the most, background stamps, uh, for the most part background stamps, my delusion stamps, my Tim Holtz stamps. And then down here I have some binders and in those binders I have them labeled A through Z. I have all the rest of my stamps. Those are sentiments. Uh, Christmas stamps, Halloween stamps that are cling mount or um, the other ones, the clear stamps. So yeah, that's where I keep them. Wood mounted stamps are actually in a drawer because I don't use them as much. So because I'm, on, I'm trying to do this with just one hand right now, I'm going to put you on the tripod and I'm going to move my stamps over to my desk and I will show you exactly how I have them stored and why I decided to go with this method of storage. So hang on. Okay, I'll be right I'm back. back. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the stamps in the binders. And like I said, uh, all of them are labeled. This particular binder has just Unity stamps on it or in it. Um, I was a subscriber to their stamp sets for a few months and I found that I wasn't using them, so I stopped subscribing. Uh, mostly because I find myself just using mixed media stamps, background stamps, for the most part. I'm not ready to part with these because they're really nice, but yeah, I'm not using them very much. So anyways, the stamps that I do have in the binders, I've tried to on each of the... Oh, I wish I could remember what these plastic coated pages are. It's not easy mount? I can't remember. At any rate, uh, you can find them in several different places and I know you can definitely find them out online. If I can remember what the name is, I will try and link it uh, in the description below. So what I did on each page is that I went ahead and either made a photocopy of the stamps, you know, the original sheet, or even if I had the sheet itself, I just went ahead and taped it down to the front page. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then on the back side, I have the stamps that are just for that particular set. And that one doesn't want to stay. And in between each sheet, I have a piece of cardstock. And the reason that I did that, and it's really not applicable in this binder, but it was more so in the other binder because I had all my stamps in the binders. Because I don't clean my stamps as well as I should, I was getting ink all over the sheets and it was just getting ugly. So I decided to go ahead and put a piece of cardstock in between and just make my life easier. Now these uh, Unity stamps are basically um, labeled by what month it was. And you can see it wasn't very long. So let me put this aside and I'm going to lose this stamp and show you how I prefer to store my stamps. 
you know, <clears throat> if you watched my last video on the die cutting station, you'll know that I like to be able to uh, look at stuff and flip through it and easily access it. And I also mentioned in the video that I hated dealing with packaging, and I still do. But the stamps were the issue. And the reason it was an issue because is that a lot of the clear stamps, and actually all the clear stamps, if you just put these on there, which I didn't keep, okay, can't get it out of there. Um, I didn't keep the plastic pieces over top because when I originally put the stamps in the binders, I got rid of all of that. So I don't have it. So what I did is I took those same sheets that I had in the binders and I cut them in half and then I just rounded the top corners and uh, put the stamps on there and for some of my stamps and not this one here but let me see if I can find one if I had either the, cl the uh, clear packaging with the stamp image itself then I went ahead and put it on the back and I wrote the name of the stamp set most of them don't have that because again they were in binders and at the time when I did it I wasn't thinking about it so live and learn at any rate, right now it's not a very pretty storage system in terms of I didn't use the pretty labels to write across the top which manufacturer it was, but I'm okay with that. It's, it's stamps. Um, yeah, and the ones that do have, like if I do have the sheet on the back, like this one here from Donna Downey, then I know that I don't have to write on, on here that it's the Hollyhocks. It's the Hollyhocks. You know, some of the other ones like these here, um, the Kaiser Craft, I don't have the original sheet. Well, I do, but it's just glued on this side. So I wrote at the bottom which one it was, sheet music and script. And so I started to tell you the reason, one of the reasons why I ended up having to put my stamps in some kind of packaging, <coughs> excuse me, is because the clear stamps were sticking to the page in front. So I wasn't able to flip as easily as I wanted to because they were stuck together. And not only that, prying them apart was getting to be a pain. And as well, the cling mount stamps, I was finding some of them don't stick as well. So I was losing them. So I finally gave up on the fact that I was gonna have no packaging involved and bought some of these. These are Avery sheet protectors, and the size is five and a half by eight and a half inches. I got mine on Amazon.com. Uh, fairly reasonable. The only thing is, is and let's see if I have something I can put here that you can see. I'm hoping you can see that. They are page protectors, so they do have. Um, the part that goes in the binder in the holes but I ended up having to cut that off on each of mine right here uh, because I couldn't fit two sets of stamps across so that's the only reason I did that and I'm good with that because I will never put stamps in binders again it's it that just wasn't working for me so yeah that's how I store my stamps um, I don't have that many of them <coughs> Excuse me again. Let me get the other one. Of course, I say I don't have that many of them, but I have probably more than I think I do. This is the other basket, and you can see that on this side I have the Delusions and the Stampers Anonymous. Uh, these are bigger, way bigger, and <coughs> it, I mean, it does work. It's not ideal, but until I change some other things on my shelving, I have to keep both of these in the same basket. Uh, as for the del delusion stamps, I didn't <clears throat> put these in page protectors. Um, they hold up pretty well on the storage sheet that they come on. I had more issues with the Tim Holtz ones, probably because they're older and they've been used more. So those are, um, especially the smaller packs, are in the um, envelopes that go for his binders and I do have his binders um, 
I'm going to keep them. I'm going to use them for something else, but it wasn't wor working for the stamp storage for me. I just, I didn't like having to open through it. I'm like, I need something easy. And if it's not easy, I'm not going to use it. I already know that about myself, so let's make it easy. So anyways, that the ones that are loose or didn't come on the, um, on the sheets, then I went ahead and used up the envelopes that I had, and that includes, let's see if I can get it out here, the clear stamps. I just left them on the original packaging that they came in, and I, ha I have a piece of paper in there so I can see through, or not through, but see what the stamp is so that I'm not looking into nothingness here. Just makes it easier. But I just put it all in the envelope or the binder page itself and just threw it in there. So yeah, that's how I store the majority of my stamps. Um, like I said in the first part of the video, my wood stamps are stored in, uh, in a drawer. There are a few that I use and I would like to have some of those out, but for now that's not possible. And I'm not really willing to... Um, take them off the wood blocks so at any rate it's it's working because it's not something that like I said that I'm using very often so it's and it's easily accessible for me if I need to get to them I know which stamps I have there I have just a few so it's not that big a deal so that's how I'm storing my stamps um, once again this is again kudos to Jennifer McGuire even though I was trying to not have them in any kind of sleeve or packaging of any kind. I found that if I just had the one that I didn't have to open, etc., if I could keep the size uniform, that it would work for me. And so far, it's working out really well. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to comment, thumbs up, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.